Welcome to Winging It. We're starting a new campaign today. This is the new uh, Dream Eaters campaign that has just come out in the past month. Uh, it's actually two campaigns in one, so I'm going to have four investigators uh, that will be taking through this. I will be going over the first two uh, in this video, uh, going through their decks, um, and that would be Tommy and Luke. This is the Dreaming side and the Waking side. Uh, I will be playing uh, uh, Tony and Mandy. So, uh, this is Tommy Muldoon. Uh, I'm going to go over him and his investigator. First, the most important thing is his miniature, which I super love. My wife just finished painting this uh, last night, and I just couldn't be happier with how cool he turned out. This is a custom miniature that I made on Hero Forge. Like I said, my wife painted it because she's better at these sort of things. And yeah, super fun. Going to be super fun to play. I'm looking forward to playing with him. So, uh, this is Tommy Muldoon. Okay, he is a guardian. Um, he has the same stats as Roland, three willpower, three intellect, four fight to uh, evade. Um, his special ability is um, when an asset you control is defeated, gain X resources, where X is the total number of damage and horror on that asset. Shuffle that asset into your deck. So he can recur uh, assets that have damage and horror, which is super awesome. Uh, makes him, you know, they talk, uh, people have called Paladin or, you know, kind of a tank. Um, his, his Elder Sign effect is plus two. You can move up to two damage and or horror from Tommy Muldoon to an asset you control or vice versa. So kind of helps you deal maybe some direct damage. So that's neat. Um, his deck building, um, he gets, uh, he's the, the standard main class off class from the core set with um, his main class being Guardian and uh, his off class being uh, Survivor. So he's a reverse York, which uh, is a very cool, <laughs> Survivor is a, a great class to have uh, as a secondary class, a lot of neat cards there. And of course, Guardian, we're gonna be, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of soaks, a lot of allies, we're gonna be leaning hard into that. Um, so that's the kind of where we're, and big guns, of course. Um, this is, uh, I'm not quite, this is, I've only played uh, Tommy through two scenarios and I've played him in my four player group. We have uh, somebody who's playing Tommy. So I've seen him uh, in action over one scenario. So I don't have a lot of experience with him. Um, and I think it's, you're tr trying to find the right balance between, you know, soaks and, you know, with the economy and, you know, making sure you can still fight and do your job. So uh, that this is kind of where I've landed on this balance. Also, the difference between, like, if I was playing him in four-player, I wouldn't be doing, including any clue tech, but in in uh, two-handed, I at least try to include some clue tech, which is taking up some valuable space. It, I really am struggling to find, you know, the right... Uh, the right mix of making sure I have enough soaks to take advantage of his ability while still being able to fight and do a little bit of cluing. Uh, so it may have been better just to go full on guardian and, and let Luke handle the cluing. Uh, it just makes me a little bit nervous and too, in, in, uh, and too handed to do that. So we will see. Anyway, let's uh, start going. First, we'll take a look at his, um, you know, his signatures. So this is Becky. Uh, Becky is a uh, cost two. It's an asset goes on the table. Um, has the wild icon and then a fight and agility, so he's got the physical stats. Uh, Tommy Muldoon deck only it has it takes two ammo when it comes in. So each uh, resource gained from Tommy Muldoon's uh, ability may be moved and placed on uh, Becky as ammo. So as stuff uh, as his stuff gets defeated, he can put it on Becky as ammo. It's two handed, and uh, you can spend one ammo fight. You get plus two fight and do plus one damage. So it's basically a forty five Thompson. Uh, but it, uh, but you can, you know, recur an ammo and keep it in for, and it's a lot cheaper to put into play. Okay. So now we'll look at his weakness. Uh, so his weakness has a revelation effect, uh, discard each asset you control with damage or horror on it. If no assets are discarded, then shuffle it back into the deck. So this is basically going to, you know, it's going to make you want to, uh, kill off your soaks very quickly. Uh, or not spread out the damage around uh, so that you don't like get wiped out, you know, three resources all at once or three assets all at once by this. Uh, so it's going to, you know, this is one that's going to have a lot of effect on you if you haven't pulled it yet. And of course, if you end up with some of the agency backup, which would be nice, you know, you're going to be very wary of losing an agency backup because you don't get to shuffle it back in. It has to, you know, it just goes to the discard pile. All right. So for weapons, he's already got um, Becky 
for as a good weapon. I'm going to take four more weapons. I tend to like to run five weapons in my um, Guardians or four weapons and I prepare for the worst. But this is going to be a five weapon deck uh, with Becky. We've got the 45 Thompson. It's two handed. It's just like Becky. Uh, plus, uh, um, you know, it's got it gets five ammo, but you know, there's no way to reload it. Or at least no way in and of itself to reload it. Um, you get plus two fight and plus one damage for the attack. So same kind of thing. Um, it's six resources. Very, very expensive. Um, but because he can play active desperation, it's something that he can potentially you know, recoup the investment on. Uh, and it's a, it's a good good fighting weapon. So um, Enchanted Blade. This is my standard go-to. Putting it in every deck replaces the machete. <laughs> it uh, gets three charges. Uh, not ammo, so you can't uh, ammo it up with uh, things like extra ammunition. But anyway, fight, you get plus one fight for this attack. Uh, as an initial cost, to show its ability, you may spend one charge to empower the blade. If you do, you get plus one fight, or plus, yeah, plus one fight and deal plus one damage from this attack. So, uh, yeah, the enchanted blade's really good. It takes up a hand slot and arcane slot. He doesn't care about the arcane slot. What's good about this one is even when it's out of charges, or you can preserve charges, you know, by slow playing it and getting the plus one fight and, and doing damage on smaller enemies. So you don't necessarily need, uh, it doesn't become useless when it's out of ammo, or charges, I should say. Uh, and you can preserve charges if you need to. So just a, re a really solid weapon. A plus two fight is always good. Okay, well, again, now we got Beat Cop, which is, um, you know, it's it's clearly mainstay in a lot of Guardian decks. It gives you the plus one fight. Um, and then, of course, you have the discard Beat Cop to deal one damage. Of course, we will rarely do that with him because we don't want to discard Beat Cop. We want to recur him by just taking damage and horror soaks, getting paid our four resources or three resources or whatever it is, and, you know, shuffling it back in and then getting him out later. But a uh, Beat Cop is going to be really good. Definitely part of what we want to do is, as far as fighting. Now we have Guard Dog. Um, again, is uh, cost me three. He's he also can take uh, four uh, four damage and horror, but it's going to be uh, you know more on the damage side. Uh, and then when the Guard Dog gets attacked, uh, he can attack back and do a direct damage. So it's really good. This is just like Tommy's going to run around getting attacked by things, and then when he's done, he gets to shuffle it back into his uh, his deck. So you know, dog, Guard Dog's pretty phenomenal. Okay, now we're going to get into the, the pure soaks. Um, in my trial run when I ran uh, Tommy, I didn't take something worth fighting for. And, and what I don't like about something worth fighting for in Tommy is that it costs three. And then if you take three horror, then uh, it ends up just, uh, you know, basically recouping its cost. It doesn't, like, gain you any economy. It's just kind of a soak. But I found I was having its... Uh, I found that I wasn't having enough soaks i think the, the idea is to, to get this and also this can um you know this can soak for for luke if i need to which is you know something we want to do as a, as a guardian protector uh so i wanted to go ahead and take one of these um i'll probably replace this with the brother xavier or other allies uh eventually but for now you know i don't have like a lot of ally options i don't have a charisma uh so this kind of makes sense now Cher cherish keepsake also soaks horror but it does it for free now it doesn't uh you know, it doesn't, it, you can't take it for Luke this way, but, you know, this is basically an economy card, right? Take two horror, oh, get two resources, shuffle it back in, wait till it comes out again. So, uh, definitely a card that, um, you know, that I want to play. This is more the kind of soaking I want to do is the Cherish Keepsake and there's something worth fighting for. All right. Then on the other side, we're just going to do the same thing with damage. We've got True Grit, which is the same thing as something worth fighting for. Again, I'm going to plan to replace it with allies, uh, but... And it doesn't really gain us anything by, by playing it, except just keeping, uh, you know, keeping folks alive. Especially Luke, who has, you know, kind of the low, uh, the low, uh, the low health. We'll, we'll appreciate this being out there. And then Leather Coat does the same thing as Cherish Keepsake, uh, but it does it for, um, uh, does it for the, the damage. So that's nice. All right. And then we got one copy of Solemn Vow. Uh, we could take up to three of these because it's Myriad. Um, I'm not... In my test plays, because Luke has things access to things like um, deny existence, he wasn't taking a whole lot of damage in horror. So this is good. You know, if I get it out, it's great. If not, I'm not too worried about it. I don't feel like this is like a critical in one play in, in two handed. I don't think it's like a critical musket it out thing. If I was playing four player, I'd be taking three of these. You know, uh, and really just making sure Tommy can soak everything. I've actually got one emergency cash. Uh, I'm doing that because I'm considering this in Active Desperation as kind of my two economy cards. I think he's already generating just loads of economy doing what he does. 
So I feel like, you know, I don't need a lot of economy. Two economy cards are good. And uh, so I just chose to go with this one in Act of Desperation. So Act of Desperation, you know, will let me, uh, you can, you know, I can chuck a Thompson, get six resources, get it paid back for it. Um, this let, or you can chuck something out of your hand if you know if you got Buck, Becky out and you won't get economy from that, but then you probably won't need it once you got Becky out. Um, and so you can chuck an item and you basically add the uh, the cost of that item to your uh, to your fight value and then you do plus one damage. So you chuck a Thompson, chuck a Chain of Blade, uh, you know, and it's just a it, it, it's good for paying back your Thompsons after you've played them. Um, it can also go on stick to the plan, which we plan to get. Uh, so uh, it's either an economy card or it's going to be something that we can play for extra damage and, and use these cards that we can't play because we're relying on Becky. So that's kind of the idea over there. Okay, um, Lucky is just Lucky. <laughs> you know, you uh, if you don't know what it does, it basically, if, um, if you're failing a test, you can uh, pay for this and add plus two and maybe pass the test or maybe fail it less badly. It's just a really great card. It lets you undercommit to tests. Um, and so uh, excellent card. All right, we're now we're going to get into his clue tech. All right, I'm including two look what I founds, which I can either use commit for icons to get um, get him up to like a, a you know a five investigate. It's not bad. Or this is a fast uh, after you fail a skill test by two or less while investigating, discover two clues at your location. So it's a way that you know we can uh, again under commit like with lucky, and if we fail, we can pay two resources and get clues. Um, and then this is kind of our other clue tech here is the combination of, of on the hunt and seeing the crime scene of the crime uh, on the hunt which just lets you uh, search the top nine cards of the encounter deck for an enemy instead of drawing treachery so if we want to fight if we want to soak this will give us a way to do that I got one of these and then scene of the crime it's an event uh, you have to play it your first action uh, you can discover one clue at your location or two clues if there's an enemy and it doesn't provoke an attack or opportunity. You know, so you'd use on the hunt to get out an enemy. You could uh, play this, get two clues. Uh, it's just a really good card. So, especially if you're going to be, you know, if you just want to be dealing with enemies. Finally, kind of, this is my you know, trifecta of, uh, you know, my holy trinity of, of survivor cards is steadfast, which will very often be worth three fight or, uh, Three willpower, very good card. Um, this the, this gets worse and worse the more damage and horror on you. But honestly, he's got lots of soak. It should always be fairly worth at least two fight and two willpower, if not three and three. So this is what I play instead of guts these days. Um, take the initiative, which it gives you three of anything, uh, as long as um, you haven't taken any actions this phase, or and uh, if you have, it just goes down by one. So. Uh, it's really nice. This is always worth three in the mythos phase, and then it's you know worth three if you do it as your kind of your first action. So really, really solid card. And then of course, who doesn't take vicious blow? You know, it's good for odd health enemies. It's good when you don't have a weapon and you need to punch a two health enemy. Uh, it's just you commit to a skill test and you should, you do an extra damage if you're successful. Also good when you want to add damage and you're hitting something that's on that's on luke right because if he fails he won't accidentally hit luke for the extra damage right because it's only on success that that takes him so finally we got um, one of the new weaknesses uh this is self-centered uh it's multiplayer only but we are playing multiplayer because two-handed is is multiplayer right um and so you put it into your threat area you cannot commit cards to another investigator skill test or uh, affect that investigator with player card effects, except uh, aspects that cause damage or horror, and you take two actions to discard self-centered. So not great if we're trying to tank stuff for people. Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't really thought about how that will affect uh, him as far as his ability to, you know, I know he can't play Soul and Val on somebody. Um, so I don't think he can... Yeah, I guess the trigger on Solemn Vow can go off. I'm not sure how much this will affect. I'll have to look at you know, the rules and see if there's any act interactions. My gut tells me it's not great for him because he's trying to protect other, other players, but it may actually not be that bad. So I guess we'll see. But uh, anyway, uh, so this is, again, uh, Tommy and Luke are going to be going into the, uh, the dream world. Uh, so let's take a, a look at Luke and see how I've built him. And our dreamer, Luke. Take a look at his miniature. I started painting this one, my wife finished it. So any any bad parts of this, I will take credit for. But I think he looks pretty cool. 
you know, I wasn't able to get his mask exactly because they didn't have anything like that on, um, you know, on Hero Forge. But uh, yeah, it still looks really cool. So <clears throat> got his arms raised. That whole the posing lets you do that sort of stuff. So uh, again, I'm taking him into the Dreamland because this is really like he's the dreamer. So it makes sense that uh, Luke would be my guy there. So he is uh, the dreamer. His stats, he's got a four willpower, so very good for a mystic. A three intellect, two fight, three agility. Uh, so he is uh, an off class um, seeker. So uh, be using some of those seeker cards. Three intellect, not great, but I mean, we're probably going to try to mostly be investigating through our willpower anyway. So um, he begins the, his special action is he begins his uh, the game with gate box in play. And uh, you may play one event each turn as if you are at a connecting location and engage with each enemy at that location. So I'll tell you, I have never seen the community so confused over rules. And I think it's because um, as if is not really a well-defined term, you know, in the in the game rules. So there's not a lot of clar clarification about, you know, what that means. And there's some really, a lot of interactions that people are just, you know, concerned about. You know, I've heard people say, you can do these things, you can't do these things, as if, does it mean, you know, in what aspects are you there, or what aspects are you still, you know, where you're at, and, and people don't know. So um, I'm going to do my best to muddle through, you know, the rules and play what I think is right. But, you know, it's, it's really hard to say, um, you know, what that, uh, what all that means, but, um, yeah, we're going to have fun and, you know, do our best. Um, so his elders in effect is plus one, place one charge on gate box, which is incredible because that gate box is great. Um, like I said, he is, uh, he's a mystic with zero to five and seeker zero to two. So he's just kind of the normal, you know, main class off class from the core box kind of. So that's what we got with Luke. All right, um, and I will just say I did take two arcane researches. This gives you a trauma, but lets you upgrade skills um, for cheap. Which in a since this campaign is only for, um, since this ca campaign is only four scenarios long, uh, it might feel like it's not worth it, and maybe it isn't. But because Tommy is so good at just making sure that like people around him don't die. I just thought it was worth it was okay to start with two horror and you know be able to upgrade you know my spells uh, very quickly so um, that'll let me get my sixth sense up it uh, I don't think I said it but it gives you each one of these gives you plus one discount you know on upgrading a spell so sixth sense can be upgraded cheaply shriveling order protection deny existence possibly if I want to go uh, you know <laughs> uh, go go for luxury cards but anyway. Um, it, I just felt like it was worth it. I'm only going to use it three times, but, or at least, you know, assuming he makes it all four scenarios three times. Uh, but I just feel like anything I can do to try to get those, uh, you know, those six senses upgraded very quickly, the shrivelings upgraded very quickly, and this, you know, wards, uh, just every little bit helps. So I didn't think the risk was that bad. Okay, so here's the gate box, and this is what starts in play. And um, it just says it uh, has three charges. And you, for a free action trigger, you can exhaust gate box, spend one charge, disengage from each enemy, engage with you, search your bonded cards for dream gate, put it into play, and move to it. So it lets him go to a special happy place. Um, it's, he starts with it in play, but if you need to replay it, it's uh, three resources, and it's an asset. It's not a permanent, so this can get discarded from Crypt Chill and that kind of stuff. So that is worth noting. So I have the gold sleeve on it, which is what I use for permanents. Um, but if I were to actually dis discard it, I have to go find a purple sleeve and, and put it in. So... But uh, I'm willing to risk it. <laughs> so it is worth noting that the, the timing on this, there is a timing window in between uh, Hunter and before uh, Hunter attacks that you would be able to kind of nope out and go to your happy place. Uh, so this will let him, uh, you know, uh, avoid getting hit by uh, by Hunter enemies if, if he so chooses. So that's uh, one of those timing windows things. So here's the dream gate. This is what it takes you to. And it's bonded. Uh, uh, well, this is, sorry, this is the bad one. Let's look at the good one. All right, so this is the dream gate. Um, it is a one shroud, zero clue location. It's bonded to the gate box. This is what uh, gate box would move us to. And it's connected to each other revealed location and vice versa. So we could play using his ability. We could, you know, play drawn to the flame from here or we get clues or, you know, shortcuts, move people around or, you know, barricade or whatever. Um, 
At the end of the investigation phase, it said dream uh, gate aside, out of play. If he's here, move him to any real location. Oh, and I missed that enemies and investigators other than him cannot enter the dream gate. So he's kind of safe. He's a safe, happy place. Now, um, his weakness, which is relevant, detached from reality when it comes out. Um, it's if the dream gate is in play, flip it over. Otherwise, search your bonded cards. Uh, for dream gate and put it into play in either case disengage from each enemy engage with you and move to dream gate so you do you know this is the other side pointless reality it's a six shroud zero clue um after you uh, successfully investigate flip it over so then you can go back to his happy place if he can beat a six investigate which is hard and probably not going to do it most of the time now i'm going to try uh forced at the end of the investigation phase set uh dream gate aside out of play if he's here, move him to any real location and takes two horror. So it's just a matter of taking some horror. It basically not a big deal. Kind of shut him down for for a turn, and there you go. So that's the gate box. All right. So I'm taking uh for his hand slots. I'm taking two Hawkeye folding cameras. Uh, two. Uh, they take up a hand slot. There, the two resources to put down. Um, and so after the last clue is discovered from a location, place uh, one resource onto it, which you can do both of these at once, but it's lim limit once per game, so you can't keep clearing the same location. When you have one on it, you get extra willpower, and you get another agility. Uh, when you get three, then it's plus one sanity. So really, uh, you know, the sanity, of course, would be nice if we're taking horror from, you know, things, but the main thing is getting his willpower here. You know, I don't know that we'll use the intellect that much, but of course it's always nice. But being able to boost his willpower is super good in his hand slots, uh, you know, can get him very, very high. So. We want to get these out. We want to get these in his hands, you know, and we want to let him be, uh, uh, you know, boosting his will, will with these. Okay, so six cents. Uh, this is your standard. Uh, it's three resources. Put an asset down. Uh, investigate uh, using willpower instead of an elect. So that's pretty much what you have this for. And then, if of course, if you draw a spooky token, um, then you can uh, choose a revealed location, connect to your location, and you're now investigating as if you were at the chosen location instead of your location. So it lets you get uh, clues off of uh, difficult, uh, uh, you know, difficult high shroud locations because you can use either shroud value for your investigate. So that's nice. Very good investigate card. Um, right of Seeking should be next. I, uh, because it's my other kind of investigate card. So I'll just, uh, I'll just grab it. Right of Seeking is kind of your traditional seeking card. It has charges. Um, you can investigate using your willpower instead of intellect the same way, but of course you're going to get two clues. You'll get an additional clue at your location. But if you draw a spooky token, then you end your turn. So you kind of want to do this one last. But this is nice for clue acceleration. It complements six cents very well. And uh, if you can get three of these off, that's you know three actions you saved. It's very nice. And then um, I gave him a shriveling because, like I said, I want both these guys to be able to do both things. He's primarily getting clues, but I also want him to be able to fight. So we've got shriveling. Um, which is spin, he gets four charges, spin one charge, fight, uh, uses uh, willpower instead of um, fight, and deals one um, damage. And if a spooky token is uh, revealed, then you take one horror. Not great, but it, uh, it, you know, he can do some work. And, you know, if they need to team up to take down the big enemy, they can. All right, now I have two different allies. I got uh, two Mr. Rooks and one David Renfield. Um, these are the kind, both of these are allies that you like, you don't have to have out and keep out for a long period of time. Uh, Mr. Rook, the famous Mr. Rook, sees three resources. He gets three secrets. You can exhaust him. It's been one resource. I search the top three, six, or nine cards of your deck. Draw a card. If you get a weakness, you have to pull it as well. Shuffle your deck. So, you know, this will make him going to pointless reality pretty quickly early on, but you know, it is what it is. It's fine. You know, he can get set up, get his cards. Being able to just joint cards that you want makes your deck very consistent. Mr. Rook is great. And, again, like, if he dies, he's, he's giving you two damage horse soak, and you don't mind paying it. Because you can put another one in, or you can put in a David Runfield. Or you can pay him over to David Runfield. So, David Runfield, uh, two resource, uh, one intellect uh, for committing. Um, while Runfield has at least one doom on him, you get... Uh, plus one willpower. So the, he can be a willpower boost. The other thing that's really good about him in uh, Mystics in general is the the two, uh, because uh, Mystics tend to uh, need damage soaks because they're low on damage or low on health. So he gives you a two health soak, which is really, really great. Um, and uh, of course, so does Rook, but 
you know, Rook is not usually accessible to a lot of mystics. So anyway, you can exhaust David Renfield or free trigger and place one doom on him, gain one resource for each doom on David Renfield. So you can put one doom on him and then you get your one willpower boost and you just need a way to off him later so that you don't accidentally, um, uh, so you don't accidentally advance early and your team's mad at you. Of course, it would just be me mad at myself because I'm playing two-handed here um or you can put two doom on him to get more resources it's just that you gotta you know take you know take care of him sooner so uh Renfield's good i can override him with mr rook so that's kind of the plan i do plan i'm hoping to get uh, diana esperanza instead of david Renfield at some point getting like a charisma but i'm not sure if i'll be able to go down that build i don't know i've only played du um luke like three times so i i don't have a lot of experience with uh you know, upgrade plan so we'll see how it goes uh, Holy Rosary, pretty standard affair. Uh, you might be tempted to take uh, St. Hubert's Key with him because it would also boost his intellect, but I'm really just not playing to lean hard, lean hard into his intellect. Um, so it, this is cheaper, and then cheaper is good. So you get plus, uh, it's just a willpower boost. It gives him a horror soak, and it's two resources. So it's just a good, good staple. I include it in most of my Mystic decks. What can I say? All right, crack the case. Um, this is a fast uh, play after investigator discovers the last remaining clue at your location. Investigator's location, uh, gain a total of X resources distributed as you wish. X is the location shroud value. So this is economy card. I, I usually replace emergency cash with this in uh, secret decks. So it's um, it's nice. You can you save an action over emergency cash. Um, and you can sometimes get more resources, but even if you only get like two or three, it's generally pretty fine. And Luke can play it, as far as I know, if I understand the as-if rules, you know, if somebody discovers a clue at, at a neighboring location. Which, generally, since he's the main clover in this group, it probably won't be anything. But, you know, hey, maybe Tommy will look what I found on a big shroud and he'll get a lot of resources out of it. Okay, so shortcut. Uh, you know, this is obviously a standard, you know, a lot of seekers like this card. Uh, fast, play only your turn, choose an investigator your location, move the investigator to a connecting location. Uh, again, he can play this uh, at a location, so he could move Tommy around even if he's not there, or he could play it and move himself to a connecting location, kind of skip two uh, locations without even uh, taking an action. So, good card for him. Now we have everybody's favorite card, Barricade, that goes in every seeker deck, right? No, it actually is generally considered a pretty weak card, and very few people run it. Um, it is, a t and the reason is because you put it down, and then it goes away. Like it just can't sit out there for very long. It doesn't do very much work unless you're like Cerebro Men or something like that. Um, it's a zero cost event. Attached to your location, non elite enemies cannot move into attached location. Force an investigator leaves the attached location. This card barricade. But here's the thing: since Luke can play this at a connecting location, he can play it. Stop enemies from coming after them, and since no no investigators leaving the investi the uh, the location, it just kind of stays there forever. I've already used this to great effect um, in uh, the one scenario I played with him, which was the um, uh, return to a curtain call, and uh, I trapped that new enemy up on the balcony, and she just kind of stayed there, and it worked great. So uh, happy with barricade, drawn to the flame, pretty standard clue tech for mystics. They're only clue tech from the, the core box. Draw the top two cards in the encounter deck, then discover two clues at your location. So not too scared of the encounter deck, we hope. Um, but if he plays this in uh, his, you know, in his in his happy place, his dream state, then uh, if he draws an enemy, as far as I know, the enemy just blanks because enemies can't go in there. And of course, he can use this to investigate any revealed location. Or he can play it, you know, he's out on the field, he can play it, uh, you know, for a connecting location. So very good. These are, by the way, are all the the kind of the events that he can play at connecting locations. So Storm of Spirits, it's um, this is another attack attack with uh, willpower instead of fight. It costs three. It's an event, um, and uh, if you do damage, you do two damage to everything at its location. And if you pull a spooky token, you're going to do a damage to yourself and all the other investigators at your location. But this is a nice one where you can just you know he can if there's a, a bunch of enemies like say swarm enemies which we're going to encounter, he can just take them all out you know, in one big swoop, and he could do it even from, you know, a location away, so, uh, yeah, definitely a, a cool thing to be able to play, he could even play it from within his, uh, his, uh, his happy place. All right, next we have Deny Existence, uh, fast play when a counter card or enemy attack would cause you to do one of the following, uh, choose one, discard cards from hand, lose resources, lose actions, take damage, take horror, you ignore that effect, uh, that aspect of the effect. So obviously a very strong card just lets you say, nope, I just don't believe it. Um, it's not going to happen. So always, 
always good to, uh, to have a deny existence. And what, what what's good about deny existence? It's almost like a um, uh, almost a survivor like card in the uh, the the way that you can kind of like undercommit to test because you know if you fail, you only have to play. You only have to commit this after you fail the test. So it's kind of like a lucky but kind of mystic style. Okay, we got premonition. Um, so this is just a fast play in any player window. Put it into play, reveal when a chaos token in the forest, when a chaos token would be revealed, uh, you can just play it off permission. So this is just basically, I'm going to see what's going to happen before it happens. Again, you can decide how much you want to commit because you know, you know, what you need to do to pass or if it's just hopeless. Water protection, not much to say about water protection. It's, you know, draw an encounter card that's not an enemy. You can uh, play this, take a horror and cancel it. That's a good card. Okay. And then finally, we just got some unexpected courages. Just good, good all around kind of thing. We'll also potentially let him evade with his three agility, but maybe we need to you know throw it at a willpower test. Maybe we need to investigate it. So yeah, just commit the two wilds and you're good to go. And finally, he got everybody's favorite weakness. Not really, the tower. Um, so you cannot commit cards to skill tests while the tower is in your hand. Uh, if it's in your opening hand during setup, before or after taking your mulligan, you cannot replace it. It must stay in your opening hand. So uh, I don't like to see this card. Fortunately, he's not planning on playing a, a heavy commit style. We've only got the two skill cards, but it's still something that will tax your resources and isn't something that uh, you know you want to enjoy seeing. And especially, it eats up your mulligan. It's really, really rough. So anyway, uh, that is Luke. And now let's step into the dreams and see how it goes for our uh, our two heroes who have elected to go to sleep and investigate the dreamlands